Joining me now is Michael Costa, former New South Wales Labor Treasurer and Liberal MP Garth Hamilton. Uh, Michael, what do you think Penny Wong is up to? Well, I think Penny Wong has been foolish and is inept. Um, and clearly, Andrew, you're absolutely correct. This is about internal ALP politics. It's got nothing to do with solving the problems in Israel, as if, uh, and Gaza, as if Australia could do that in any event. Um, you know, uh, it's just a joke. It's very much focused about what's going on inside the Labor Party, particularly the Victorian Labor Party that has a state uh, conference coming up, and also, of course, the uh, New South Wales Party. And the, and the reason I say that this is foolish is that it's not going to achieve the outcome they want. I mean, um, unfortunately, uh, in those Western Sydney seats, if you were to take a poll, it would not surprise me to see the majority of the people there supporting Hamas. I mean, the reality is that they're... The, the chant, the river to the sea, is the chant that's the dominant chant in those communities. I don't hear people out there calling for a two-state solution. Uh, and in fact, um, the majority of people in those seats wouldn't support a two-state solution. This is why this is a very, very foolish policy that uh, she's adopted. In addition, it risks alienating the rest of the community. I mean, you've got to remember the Green vote in, say, um, uh, the, what's his name? Tony Burke's seat was less than the national average. Um, I think um, in um, uh, the energy minister's seat, uh, it was around 6%, yes, half the national average. Um, so the fact mm. of the matter is they're really not uh, playing to the majority in their electorates in any event, and they risk losing the majority of the Australian population. This is another yeah. uh, political strategy like The Voice. Garth Hamilton... Um... I've heard people today say, well, look, uh, Anthony Albanese is backed uh, Penny Wong today. I'm not so sure. That press conference, he cut it quite short. He seemed to be playing it down. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Is, is, is Penny Wong running her own foreign policy, as I suggested it on Monday, or are they just playing good cop, bad cop? Isn't it sad to see Australia's foreign policy being dictated by a factional rift in the Australian Labor Party over something so important? And uh, look, Andrew, I don't think I've ever been so disgusted uh, in this government as to what we've seen today. This, you, you, this, you're right. Michael is right. This is inept. Uh, there is stupidity in the thought process that goes into this. This is also one of the most cold-blooded calculations that we could possibly see from an Australian government to completely turn our back on our Israeli friends at a time, Andrew, when there are still Israeli hostages being held in terrible situations, uh, at a time where uh, the uh, Hamas are still continuing uh, to threaten further aggression against Israel. Our friends are in need and uh, this is the position of, uh, of Australia. Our, our position is to dangle a reward in front of those who have committed this, I'm not surprised that Labor is split. Uh, you know, there are a lot of good people uh, in the Labor Party. Unfortunately, what they're allowing is this ideology to tear them and Australia apart, and it's led us down a very, very dangerous path. Well, I have to pick up on that, uh, uh, Michael. The Labor has... The Labor right wing has long had a proud history of supporting um, Israel, right? I've seen it, uh, Israeli meetings, worshipping Bob Hawke, for instance. Bill Shorten was very strong. Where are the Labor right people, the defenders of Israel now? I'm not hearing from them. And I've got to ask you, I mean, uh, the, the question I, I just asked Garth, do you think that Penny Wong is on a, on a you know, thing on a frolic of her own, dictating to Albanese seems all at sea with foreign affairs, is it her policies, her left-wing policies? And if it's her left-wing policies, where is the right? Well, the first response is, remember, Albanese is from the left. I mean, let's just not beat around the bush. You're dealing with somebody that, if he wasn't Prime Minister, would probably be out there throwing bombs uh, at the direction of whoever the Prime Minister was on this very issue himself. That's been his history. Uh, he's been able to sort of grow in the job or at least moderate some of his views in the job because that's what he requires to keep the majority of Australians on side. But he is from the left. And to answer your question about the right, uh, there are people in the right that are 
uh, fighting against this policy, but they're a minority. We've long passed the days when the right, and particularly the New South Wales right, was the dominant uh, driver of policies in this country. Um, you know, it's been 20 years since you could argue that position, and that's why we've had two prime ministers yeah, but, 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 uh, Michael, name from the one, left. Name one, name one figure on the Labor right who has publicly stood up and challenged this tidal wave well, of well, Hamas... Look, uh, pro-Hamas propaganda and said Labor is on the wrong track here. Well, Name look, one. there are many people. Uh, well, like, I mean, there's many people. I mean, Michael Eason, for example, the former Secretary of the Labor Council, the position I took, uh, uh, he, he's running a group uh, that's supporting, you know, Labor for Israel, and he's done work behind the scenes, and there's many, many people in the Labor Party. Behind but the they scenes. are not well, the dominant I group. Can't wait to have they're them They're not the dominant the group. Sorry? Yeah, well, look, no, the point is they're not making the fuss. 